Hello everyone, I'm the Sassy Gamer and long time no see. If you haven't noticed, I have been slightly absent on YouTube for the past while, but now we are back to play some more Civ and we are going to get right into things and kick things off by starting an A to Z challenge, which means we are going to play through every single leader in the game from A, starting with Alexander, all the way to Z, although there are no leaders who have the name uh, who have a name that starts with Z, so it's really A to W, from Alexander to Wilhelmina. And the rules for this challenge are as follows. We are going to play every game on Deity Difficulty, uh, just a side note, I haven't played Civ in three months, so this first game might be a little rough, so take it easy on me in the comment section. But yeah, so every game, Deity Difficulty, uh, the map settings, game settings are going to be variable between games uh, in terms of, you know, which game modes I want to turn on, what map type I want to use. I want to have fun with this still, so I'm going to give myself some freedom to use uh, some different things there based on what leader I'm playing. Might even use some custom maps for some of these. Um, and then aside from that, the only other rules for this challenge are no restarts are, are allowed, which means Saxy Gamer in shambles, and no reloads are allowed, which means also Saxy Gamer in shambles. So it's going to be a test to see how many games I can win with how many leaders on Deity difficulty. For every game as well, I am going to be putting the game settings and the map seed in the description below in case you want to play the game along with me. I also should mention, since I've been away from YouTube a while, I'm going to be probably playing around with some of the editing and the series format for the first few episodes of this series, so just uh, be patient or, you know, let, let me know if there's something that you don't like or something uh, you do like in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into our first game, starting off, as I mentioned, with Alexander. Fortunately for me, Alexander is a pretty good leader. I think that whenever I did the leader spotlight for him originally, I underrated him pretty heavily. Nowadays, I actually think he's a very, very strong Civ and probably one of the best domination Civs in the game. So hopefully we at least have that going for us uh, in terms of us being able to win this first game of the challenge here. So I started this game off with this spawn. You can see lots of desert here, lots of hills. Uh, not exactly something that you typically would desire whenever you're playing. I mean, really any game, you don't generally want to spawn in the desert because the yields are pretty terrible. Um, but overall, it's actually not a terrible spawn. Plenty of mountains nearby. We are we are at least starting on a 2-2 tile, which is very nice. Uh, and we're going to go from here. So starting off with the production, I started off with a warrior. Just something I like to go for whenever I am playing an early domination game. I feel like it's a little easier than to play aggressive uh, straight from the get-go. And for my starting techs, I basically wanted immediately to beeline for bronze working because getting an early encampment down and getting down the, uh, the Basilicoi Pythes is very important as Macedon because it's going to give you a big power spike early on to go declare war on your nearest neighbor and take them out pretty fast. Of course, did some exploring here early on, was just trying to find out exactly what was around me, if I could find any neighbors. Uh, I did find Delicate Arch, which is it's an okay natural wonder, not one I particularly care for whenever I'm playing a domination game. But much more importantly, I did find my nearest neighbor, which was Scotland over there on the right. Um, Scotland's someone that definitely is bullyable early on in the game, and that's immediately going to become the focus for how I want to play this game and where I want to expand. The other thing that I really wanted to do this game was get vampires, so I, I had secret societies on. So Sanguine Pact is by far the best whenever you're playing a domination game because getting a vampire late into the game after he's been around like a lot of kills, he literally has like 30 combat strength more than anybody else and can probably solo cities on his own. Um, so luckily I was able to find a barbarian encampment and cleared it and found Sanguine Pact. Uh, didn't have any governor titles at the time, but later on whenever I got one I was able to um, appoint Sanguine Pact and get my first vampire. Spent some time then just generally trying to explore around me. I, I built a settler as the second production in my capital just because getting out a second city early is really important both for having two cities to produce military units in and then also being able to capture space for some, some strategic resources which is also very important. So I, I saw that there were some horses over here which are really good for uh, Macedon's horseback unit. So I made sure that I went and settled that near Scotland, got those horses very fast, and then from there it became basically a beeline towards immediate domination against Scotland. After that, I had two important things if you're going to play an early domination game. So for one, I put down an encampment in that city I had just founded. So this one's really good because it's very close to Scotland's border, so very defensible. I could even just put an archer in that and attack them uh, from that encampment. It also is just nice to have somewhere to produce units that's very close to the front lines. Uh, it's also very nice because it will start producing some great general points for me. The other thing that I did was I sent a trader to Scotland. So this is pretty important because it will build a road between my capital and the city that I want to attack, which means that as I am going to attack there, it's going to be very easy to get reinforcements in if they already have the road there to improve their movement. 
I of course then also put down an encampment in my capital to make sure I get my unique building in there before I start to build all of my unique units and get some uh, free science from having the Basilicoi Pythes. Really good uh, early game building. Coupe did also declare war on me. I don't really know why. It's just very, very early game DDAI things. Fortunately though, he had basically no chance of taking any of my stuff. Uh, the, the very good thing about spawning in those desert hills was it was very defensible because I could put my warriors on those hills, uh, get the combat bonus from having high ground and then you know it was pretty easy to make sure that I could just kill all of his units I was also able to get sanguine packed in the time during this war which meant I was able to get a few kills on the vampire and build up its combat strength a little bit already made a very important policy card change here so I wanted to run the card that gave me extra production towards heavy and light uh, cavalry units in the ancient classical era because I really want to spam out some Hitaroi which is the uh, unique cavalry unit of Macedon because that thing absolutely melts people early on. So switching in this card means that I'm going to be able to produce those units a lot faster. And that is going to speed up the time at which, uh, or the, I guess it's going to shorten the time until I'm able to attack Scotland. Which is going to be important because it means they will have a lesser chance of being able to build walls. So conveniently on the same turn, I finished my Basilicoi Pythes in the capital and also finished horseback riding. Which meant then I could get out a few Hitaroi and then immediately start attacking Scotland. After just a few turns of preparation, I was able to start attacking Scotland. The war declaration came, and I was basically immediately able to run straight at the city of Cullen because, as you can see, the road that goes between my capital and Cullen makes it very easy for basically all of my units to get into that city's uh, space a little bit faster. He did, of course, have a bunch of catapults around the city, which is the classic DDAI strategy to just spam catapults early on, but... Fortunately, the Hataroi just do so much damage to the city that it really doesn't even matter that he has units around. Uh, because that unit is so strong that it will deal a bunch of damage and really not take a ton in return. Especially from something like Catapults. I also was able to get my first great general here, which is really good. So the Hitaroi itself is a classical era unit, so this means with the great general, it's going to get an additional plus 5 combat strength and plus 1 movement, which I believe takes it up to 41 combat strength base, which is... Just ridiculous considering that the city that I'm attacking has a combat strength of 20. So this as well was very, very strong early on for making it a lot easier to take out cities. And also giving me just more movement to be able to run through Scotland's land totally free. Didn't take much long after that for me to take Cullen. Uh, I was able to very easily take it. Got a bunch of Eurekas because I am playing Macedon. And from there the loyalty was not actually not too terrible. I was also able to get Oligarchy which was a very big plus. So this is going to give me some extra combat strength on uh, my melee units, like my warriors and, you know, any archers and things like that. I was also able to run some additional policy cards to uh, help mitigate some of the gold costs of the Hitaroi and also improve the loyalty in the cities that I'm taking over. So after taking one city, I basically beelined immediately for Scotland's capital, which was actually an extremely easy take. I think I was able to take it in only like one or two turns because the amount of damage that I do with the Satoroi with the Great General is actually just ridiculous. This is why Alexander is such a good Civ because basically nobody in the early game can stand up to you when you have units that have 40 combat strength on turn, you know, like 70. You just basically kill everybody that you come across, especially since they can move a lot better and you're bound to get a great general that then makes them even stronger and also with even more movement. Even more important than taking Scotland, though, is meeting Christina. So I met Christina on uh, just a few turns later, and ev everybody on this channel loves Christina, and including me, because, I mean, Christina is basically the absolute double S tier of our waifu tier list, so I, we, we, of course, have to love Christina in, in that respect. Had some loyalty troubles a little bit, nothing too surprising here. I mean, this kind of just happens whenever you're playing a domination game, no matter what. Unless you're in a golden age, you're gonna have loyalty issues. Um, so I kind of just wanted to keep rolling, take a few of Scotland's other cities, which all fell very easily. Like, I was I was even able to take some in one turn. Uh, and then as you take a clump of cities, then your loyalty kind of stabilizes out a lot more, um, and things get a lot better. Speaking of Golden Ages, I got a Golden Age in the Medieval Era, which is very good for making these loyalty, uh, the loyalty in these cities even better. Um, from there, I was just able to kind of consolidate what I had captured so far, you know, clean out some of the, the random units that were around, clean out some of the barbarians, uh, and then keep going and finishing off uh, the, the, the Scotland cities. 
There also was a military emergency that was voted on in the World Congress, and I was very surprised because I swear normally the DDAI always vote for these, but this one they actually didn't. They voted it down, so it didn't pass. And this happened probably like eight other times throughout this game, so I'm not even going to show them in the future, but every single time they went for them, people just voted against them. I guess they just really didn't want to fight me or something. I really, I really don't know why. Eventually, I got to Scotland's last city, which was Edinburgh, uh, and this one was actually pretty tough to get through. It had a crossbowman in it, which actually caused me to lose a unit or two. Um, so this was comparatively pretty tough, but still just with a vampire, you know, plenty of uh, Hitaroi. And I, I, I had also gotten Himiko during this, which is another uh, plus five combat strength on all surrounding units. Um, so with all of those bonuses, I was still able to crack through this city. And basically, in early game domination, if you're persistent enough, in almost all cases, you'll be able to take a city. Um, at least if, if, if you have a power spike with something like a unique unit. If you just throw warriors at the city, it's obviously never going to fall. But um, with anything that gives you a power spike, if you're persistent enough in Civ, chances are you'll be able to take a city. And with the taking of this city, that meant that Scotland was out of the game, and we had conquered our first neighbor. So at this point in the game, we're kind of reaching the end of the early game, so it's important to start transitioning to the mid-game. So fortunately, I had I had gotten mercenaries, which means I was able to run the policy card to discount, uh, to give me a gold discount on unit upgrades and also a resource discount on them as well, because what I want to do next is upgrade all of my Hetaroi into knights, because that's another big combat strength bonus. Uh, but the thing is, that does require iron, and it does require a lot of gold to do that. So getting these 50% discounts is actually very important. So the thing that I knew I wanted to do next was go and attack Coupe, so I moved all of my units over to the western side of my empire, started to get uh, whatever upgrades I could afford, and then move them on in. The other important thing that you have to remember whenever you transition into a mid-game domination game is that your battering rams and taking out walls in that manner becomes very ineffective after, I mean, after honestly like the medieval era. So it's important that you need to start building siege equipment. So I made sure that I got some trebuchets because for sure we're going to need them whenever we go and attack Coupe. So at this point, we've basically reached the end of the early game, and in the next video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the mid game. So if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike, and if you're looking for some more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.